Hello everybody, thanks for tuning in to the Homestead's YouTube channel. On today's episode, we're going to be speaking specifically about service berries. So I wrote down the nutritional facts for the actual berries of this plant. In a 100 gram serving, or a little more than half a cup, you're gonna have 85 calories, 5.9 grams of dietary fiber, 11 and a half to 16 grams of sugar, 42 milligrams of calcium or 11% of your daily recommended intake, which is very good for a berry, very, very good. Uh, 24 milligrams of magnesium, one milligram of iron, 1.4 milligrams of mangan manganese, 162 milligrams of potassium, half a milligram of sodium, so very low. The vitamins, vitamin C is 3.6 milligrams, A, 11 international units, E, 1.1 milligrams, and 4.6 micrograms of folate. So there are also three antioxidants found within the berries and recent studies have shown that they have anti-inflammatory properties, anti-diabetic properties, and chemoprotective effects. Uh, they also protect against cardiovascular disorders and degenerative diseases, both ocular and neurological, specifically Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. Um, these berries, the antioxidants, will improve memory, learning, and cognitive function. Basically, they protect against tissue damage within the um, neural network of your brain, so the communication between regions of your brain and within specific regions themselves. Basically, it's protecting the tissue and the, the sheets um, that help your brain communicate. So, a ton of really beneficial properties just in the antioxidants alone, but um, with high levels of calcium and some uh, vitamins in there, definitely a plant you want to consider planting on your property. Okay, so now I'm going to get into the specifics of the planting recommendations for this plant. So first of all, I'll say that it's a native plant to Ontario and the eastern provinces, so Quebec, uh, basically all the provinces east of Ontario except Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, there's up to 15 different varieties of service berry. This specific variety is called the Canada service berry and it does best in zones four to seven. Some sites can say eight and it has been found surviving in as low as 3B and up to zone nine. Um, this plant will grow on average 15 to 25 feet high. It has been noted to grow up to 30 feet high. It's considered, some varieties are considered a shrub and others are considered a small tree. They're not going to grow very big at the base and they can layer, but um, you know, you're not, you're not gonna plant these for the, the wood, um, but they will grow very high and can withstand a lot of wind with the flex in the branches and storms. So a good addition for that reason as well. 10% um, of the flowers will produce berries. So that might seem kind of low, but um, the flowers are produced very early in spring um, before dandelions are out. So your pollinators, your local pollinators and your bees, if you have bees, will love this plant for an early uh, early season snack. The first, one of the first food sources for a local pollinating species. Um, so I'll get into the habitat. Uh, you can see here that we have our creek running right beside. Uh, the soil here is moist and it will tolerate mo moist soils, but it prefers to be in well-drained areas and uh, the ground slopes into the creek so any severe rains and snow accumulation will melt off and head down into the creek there. Um, so the habitat specifically is swamps, thickets and riverbanks. Um, it's going to help with erosion and this will spread out towards the creek so we planted it here to assist with erosion. As you can see we don't really do any maintenance in this region and we're trying to plant more and more native flowering species. Um, so really kind of focused on native species at this point in the uh, lots development or permaculture development. Um, it's gonna tolerate, uh, well, it, it wants full sun to partial shade, 
but it has been found to tolerate full shade in some instances. Soil conditions, clay, loam, and sand, which is pretty natural stuff along the uh, riverbank and swampy areas, and uh, prefers acidic and neutral, like mildly acidic and neutral pH levels. And uh, it's a really low maintenance plant. Uh, it has some susceptibility to fire blight, but other than that, uh, it really doesn't have a lot of uh, issues that you need to worry about. I'm gonna come over to the second one that I planted. We planted these last year, and um, I'll see if I can get in and uh, focus in here. There you go. So you can see the new growth is uh, light green, like all new growth, and the woody growth from last season. So, yeah, they, they produced their flowers first, and a ton of flowers. Um, there's a lot of, excuse me, a lot of species that uh, will snack on this plant. So down here, I had a head of flowers, and there was one here as well. And uh, we have a hare in the backyard and some cottontails in the front, so I'm sure it was those. Uh, moose will graze on these, and deer, uh, deer will also graze upon them. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend protecting them, but you can if you want to. Um, but if you really want to consume the berries, uh, they're, they will need some protection in mid to late summer when the berries are ready. They'll be a dark purple um, when they're ready. And they're kind of similar to blueberries and maybe a cross of blueberry raspberry. They're very delicious. They have a crown on the bottom. And um, yeah, you can find these things growing in the wild. But I, I purchased these ones. I've been looking for a couple of years and I really couldn't find any at most nurseries and it was actually a local nursery that uh, had them. So yeah, I picked them up after searching for three years, uh, I found them and um, here they are, you know, they're, they're doing well. Uh, there was a lot of flowers on here. I think there's still a couple in the middle, but I'm not really, I don't think I'm gonna be able to, to zoom in. Maybe I'll give it a shot right, right in there. Pretty hard to see, but there's a couple flowers and um, I can see a couple berries have formed. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is a native species. Um, there's a ton of different varieties and uh, it's gonna fill this gap here between the elderberry over here and over there. And this one I might have to keep uh, pruned a little bit more so that it's not overlapping with the, the other plants, but um, a ton of health benefits. Uh, the, like I was trying to say before, there's a lot of birds, so I've seen cedar waxwings eating the berries off of this uh, shrub. I mean, the one that, uh, that I know that's local is maybe 12 feet tall and 8 feet wide. And um, I've seen the cedar waxwings strip it of all berries in basically two days. But, uh, you know, you're supporting local bird populations that uh, could always use our help. Um, it should also be mentioned that there's three native species of butterfly that will lay their larva on these plants and uh, So a good butterfly species if that's what you're into, but um, also just a, a Visually beautiful plant um, The leaves are silvery on the bottom and a light green on the top and in the fall they flush to orange and red um, very beautiful plant and something that I would recommend anybody planting if you live within the, you know, zones four to seven or eight, give or take. Uh, delicious berries and very healthy for you. So thanks very much for tuning into the channel, everybody. I really appreciate it. Um, we're going to keep pumping out lots of videos on the things that we've already planted this year and some of the stuff we need to catch up to from last year. If you found the video informative at all and you learned something, you could uh, like it for me and maybe share it. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel to see more of what's going on in our Zone 5 location. Again, thanks a lot for tuning in. Have a great day and take care of yourselves.